Welcome to Weekly Strange News. In this show, we'll take a look into the news and headlines to pick out curious reports of the strange, the weird, and the mysterious. Anything from UFO news to science advancements, the paranormal, and stuff labeled fringe science and fringe phenomena. Each news item we go over in the show, I will place all the links to them in the description box below once this live show is over, as well as chapters on the timeline index. Hello and welcome to all of my first time viewers and listeners, and of course, everyone watching this live. Please make sure to support this channel by hitting that like button right down below if you are watching this on YouTube and also subscribe as we do three live shows right here on this channel every single week covering topics of UFOs, the paranormal, and things that are unexplained. Also on this channel, we do post YouTube shorts keeping you up to date on the latest strange news. Whew, I'm a little out of breath here today, but we got some pretty cool news articles as I say practically every single week. So I'm going to share my screen here no more lollygagging. Let's get straight into this one. All right. So there is my screen. Nice and shared. So Congress recently passed past legislation directing the government to eventually disclose some information about UFOs, according to the New York Times. But the measure falls short of some of the more comprehensive transparency that lawmakers initially sought out for. The legislation, part of the annual defense policy bill mandates the National Archives to collect government documents related to UFOs and technology of unknown origin and non-human intelligence. President Biden is expected to sign this into law. And then also mentioning to like records haven't really said it yet, but kind of in a roundabout way, officially disclose, um, disclosed must be made public within 25 years unless classified for national security reasons by the president. <sighs> that one's a catch-22 because we're like, yeah, woo, let's get the goods, right? But they can label anything as a national security reason, can't they? They say, oh, yeah, I, I signed this bill to make UFOs more transparent and, the, and a conversation better for people. But this one, this one, this one, you know what? Actually, all of them, they're all a national security issue. Therefore, I won't be sharing any information with you. And you're like, hold on. that That's not working in my favor, is it? Do they care? Depends who you ask, but let's continue because Senator Chuck Schumer expressed that quote. This is a major, major win for government transparency on UAPs, but acknowledged that the measure is weaker than what was initially pursued. An earlier proposal by Schumer to establish a presidential commission with the power to declassify UFO records, similar to the JFK assassination panel, was not included in the final bill. Now, when we talk about the government and UFOs, we have to, with no exceptions, talk about Tim Burchett. But I like to say Burchett. It just sounds better. And people, especially the closed caption, they don't they don't spell it Burchett. No, fill in the gap on how they spell it out here in the closed caption. Well, anyways, he proposed for the imminent dis, um, declassification of certain Defense Department records also did not make it in the bill. However, he uh, was critic like he criticized the final outcome, saying we got ripped off. We got completely hosed. Uh, that, that hurts. It hurts a little bit. The defense bill allows agencies to keep records classified if their release poses a national security threat or constitutes an invasion of personal privacy. Schumer remarked on the disappointment, saying, quote, it means that declassification of UAP records will be largely up to the same entities that have blocked and obfuscated their disclosure for decades. So this man right here, just like you and I, we are seeing right through this. Yes, it's all fancy and nice words. And it's like, oh, you're so great. But in reality, they don't care. OK, it's like a salesman, kind of the same thing. They want to sell you something, but they don't care if it's actually going to work for you or not. In this case, we're getting the same kind of vibe here. Not saying that all salesmen are bad, but you get the gist, right? Then let's bring into this equation Senator Mike Rounds, 
who shared his sentiment, highlighting the lack of oversight opportunities. And despite this, the Pentagon has begun providing more explanations, more videos showing unidentified phenomena, indicating that congressional uh, pressure for transparency is having some effect. That quote right there is coming directly from the New York Times. Between you and me, I I mean, yes, we got some in 2017. We got a little bit in 2019. But in 2023, we haven't gotten any, like, good stuff from the Pentagon saying, yep, this footage is authentic to the point to where people are talking about it publicly, if you get what I'm saying. So government and their viewpoint on UFOs, it's always interesting. I, I really enjoy covering these particular articles with you just to see how the government is handling this conversation. People are going to say, why trust them? And that conversation and that question will never end. It's a catch-22. They have the biggest influence on a given population compared to any person that has a platform of some kind. So it's interesting to see what they have to say about these things and to keep up to date as well so that we are in the realm of the knowing instead of the ignorant here. Don't you agree? If you're enjoying the show so far, hit that like button. It lets me know that you're enjoying the show. And it says, hey, YouTube, we want more content like this. I do want to say hello to people on Twitter. And this is my first time streaming on Instagram live as well. My Instagram is Strange Paradigms. And it's actually just a brand new feature that StreamYard has given out. And I'm like, I need to try it out. So if you're watching this on YouTube, no, on, on, obviously on YouTube, but on Instagram, say hi in the comments. Also on Twitch, say hi as well. Getting into our next aspect here, if you f religiously follow Weekly Strange News, <laughs> we spoke about a few weeks ago, almost like a month now, about how an Indian airport had a sighting of a UFO and they canceled flights for three hours. We got some updates on that. I love updates. This is like the best part of the research is when people are following up. So I want to read this with you because it's just, it's awesome. And also Adam, thank you for that. Thank you. And hello to everyone watching this. I appreciate it. So let's, let's, read this one. I'm actually going to make my screen a little bit bigger here because, and this was a captured or this person that we're seeing on screen right here. Let me find his name just to make sure. This is the Minister of State for Civil Aviation, V.K. Singh. So the Civil Administ uh, Aviation Ministry on Thursday told the Lok Sabha that an unidentified flying object was seen near the Imphal airport on November 9th, and the object remained visible till sometime before sunset and then afterward just disappeared. Now, that little detail isn't anything new. We covered it as soon as we got the news. But here's some more goods here. Because landing and takeoff planes were suspended at the International Airport for nearly three hours on November 19th, 2023, and two flights were diverted to Calcutta, while three departing flights were delayed on the ground. That's a really big deal. Yes, air, airplanes are always delayed, and it sucks when you have to have a layover. It's awful. But there has to be a usually a very good reason to why planes are delayed or to why they are denied to land. Okay, there has to be like a very, very valid reason. And for it to say aliens, UFOs, we're getting, we're getting places, guys. We're getting places. <laughs> so at 2.30 uh, p.m. their time, the ATC received a message from the CISF control room that a UFO was seen near the airport and it just above the ATC tower overhead. This is really interesting. The object appeared to be white in color and it moved southwards southwards above ATC Tower and remained stationary there for some time. It remained visible until 4.05 local time, and then it disappeared. So in a lot of cases that we've covered where a UFO is seen at an airport, 
sometimes air traffic control will see it, other times it will not. In this case, here in India, November 19th, air traffic control saw it. And so, with their eyeballs, but did they catch it on radar? That's a big question that I bet many of you have, myself included. Does this give us that answer? No. Sadly, no, it doesn't. But airport authorities of India controls and manages the Indian um, airspace extending beyond the terrestrial limits of the country as accepted by the International Civil Aviation Organization, the ICAO, to ensure the safety and efficiency of flights. It is also responsible for communication, navigation, and surveillance of Indian airspace. And this is what this man is saying right here that we are seeing on screen because he, in a roundabout way, he's saying this is very dangerous to say a UFO is in the sky and then it's delaying flights. Not only is it just dangerous for airspace, but also on top of that, you're losing money, right? That's just another aspect that everyone talks about and it's it just needs to be addressed because it's on everyone's mind as well. It's all about the money, 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 right? Kind of deal. But we got a few extra updates on this, such as what it looks like and exactly how long it was seen. It was seen from 2.30 local time until 4.05 local time. Oh, yeah. That's that's stinking awesome. These updates are crucial. But for those that aren't familiar with this particular case that haven't been following this show for any length of time. What do you think about this? Have you heard of this? Because again, this took place November 19th, 2023, last month, almost exactly four weeks ago. Okay, so we got to we got to ask ourselves. And Perminator, that's such an awesome name. Thank you so much for becoming a YouTube member. Even the profile picture is cool. And I dig it. So that is very awesome. And thank you for correcting me, Cyber Bri. Yes, two hours. My apologies. I said, I said three, but this is why you guys watch it live to catch those little ish mistakes. So thank you for that. I do appreciate it, as always. <laughs> Getting into our next one here. And this one, this one's fun. How many of you like whales? Or have you ever read Moby Dick? If you've asked me, no, I've never actually read it. It wasn't required for me to read in school back in the day, but I know for a long period of time it was. But pushing that aside, whales are stinking cool, and the images people get of whales, masterpiece. Well, scientists at SETI, in a roundabout way, are saying if we can understand whale communication, maybe, just maybe, we might understand the language of extraterrestrials in a very, very roundabout way. Let's get into this article. Because a team comprising scientists from the SETI Institute, University of California, Davis, and the Alaska Whale Foundation experienced a significant interaction with a humpback whale, advancing their study of non-human intelligence. And this research is part of their efforts to develop intelligence filters for extraterrestrial intelligence searches the ETI. So during their study, the team played a humpback whale contact call underwater. And in response, a humpback whale named Twain approached and interactively engaged with the team's boat, mirroring the intervals between each signal played. This has been done with many animals, dolphins included. Whales are no exception. But why is this important, right? Like, how are they making this connection between whale communication and maybe ET communication? Well, this interaction detailed in Peer J Journal is considered the first communicative exchange between humans and humpback whales using the whale's own, quote, language. Lead author Dr. Brenda McCowan from UC Davis experienced the significance of this communication, noting the intelligence and complex social systems of humpback whales. And what we've noticed really throughout 2023, 
the animal kingdom is a lot more complex than we ever imagined with their own language, their own consciousness, and even their own interactions with one another. It's a lot more complex than what people originally thought 5, 10, 15 years ago. So the research draws analogies between studying terrestrial non-human intelligence systems like humpback whales and the search for extraterrestrial intelligence using information theory mathematics to understand communicative complexity. So we got to bring in the math into this. Now, if you are a math nerd, hit that like button right down below. Right now, we have 329 people watching this live, only 183 likes. Let's get to 200 if you're enjoying the show and if you're a math nerd. I am no mathy nerd over here. I love science. If I could get a degree in astrobiology, in astronomy, in anything related to science, I would. But the amount of math classes that you need, I'm just like, forget it. You know what? It's fine. I'm just gonna take a degree, get my degree in communication, because there is just a limited amount of math and I can do just the bare minimum. <laughs> so the team, which includes experts in animal intelligence, I would also get a degree in that. Humpback whale song analysis and behavioral photography. These, these, these guys sound amazing, by the way. Plans to release a second paper on the non-audio communicative behavior of humpback whales. And this work supported by the Foundation Diverse Intelligences Program aims to provide insights that could be applied to interpreting potential extraterrestrial signals. So we got to start right here on Earth, baby, and then make our way out there. So that that's the that's the mentality that they're having here, at least to my understanding. But I just thought it was stinking cool bringing the two and two together. And Brian, thank you for that. Today, I graduated today. Today was graduation day. So pretty big, pretty big, guys. Um, and more updates to come in the very, very near future. So. 2023, 2024 is looking bright and nice and shiny and filled with not 30 cent ramen, but at the very least, a dollar fifty ramen. Good stuff. Getting into our next case here, because this one, this one low key blew my mind. I was thinking, why? First of all, second of all, I want to see this in action. I want to see this with my own eyes. And John aside, thank you for that. Congrats on graduating. Hashtag Roman wagon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to everyone. Y'all are so nice. Appreciate it. Okay. I don't want to, I don't want to tear up here. Getting into this one. Oh, here's another wheel picture. I also thought was super cool. And Cindy, thank you. This wheel picture. Okay. Look at this one. It is a mouse wearing goggles. Very specifically, VR, a VR headset. Of course, this is created using AI, but you get the gist of what's going on here. And this was reported by News.Sky, and scientists have created virtual reality goggles specifically designed for laboratory mice, simulating experiences like escaping from birds. <laughs> this is... What's going through your mind to think, you know what, that's a really great idea. Let's spend millions of dollars on this. But let's continue because there's going to be more information on to why they did this. But just right off the bat, that one sentence, you'd be scratching your head just like myself and say, but why? <laughs> Out of everything, but why? So these VR headsets known as miniature rodent stereo illumination vr are equipped with dual lenses and screens to provide a 3d immersive experience to the mice and unlike human vr headsets that encircle the head these are positioned in front of the mouse's face so developed by researchers at northwestern university in illinois the goal here is the goal put your ears nice and big like a mouse is to better understand mouse behavior by replicating their natural environment more efficiently. Okay, that's why. But then how can we apply it to humans? <laughs> we'll figure it out at some point. Alien girl, thank you for that. That is so nice of you. Thank you. And <laughs> heck yeah, extra special bowl of ramen tonight. You bet. <laughs> so... 
One key aspect of this study is the simulation of aerial threats like birds or prey, and the researchers project a, a project a dark expanding disk at the top of the goggles, mimicking an overhead threat. Mice typically react by running faster on their treadmills or just freezing altogether, which are responses commonly seen in real-world situations. The team is also interested in simulating scenarios where the mouse is a predator, such, such as chasing a fly, to study brain activity related to depth perception and distance estimation as well. This is... This is so cool, okay? This is, this is awesome. The findings indicate that the brain of mice using these VR goggles are activated similarly to those of free-roaming mice, and the VR mice also learned quicker and performed better in tasks such as navigating a simulated maze to find rewards. If you are in any kind of danger, feeling any kind of fear, you better think you're going to do projects better and have better results because your life depends on it. And for these little poor mice, they don't know the difference between a VR headset and the real world. They don't know. So I'd hope that their results would be exponential compared to just dying and not running on that treadmill. Okay. Mm. Thomas, thank you for that. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Thomas. Making me, making my heart say it. So there is more to that article. That link will be in the description box below for you to read into more detail. As all of the articles that we cover every single week, they will be in the description box below, along with a chapter timeline index as well. Next is AI and a mini brain. Because this would not be weekly strange news, strange weekly news, without talking about AI. You know what? It just, it needs, it wouldn't be. We would create a black hole if we didn't cover AI at least once a week right here on this channel. And we don't want to create that, okay? We don't want to go through spaghettification. No matter how much you like ramen, we don't want that. So researchers, according to Live Science have integrated standard machine learning with sophisticated 3D models of the human brain, known as mini brains, to enhance the computing power of artificial intelligence. And these lab-grown brain tissue models existing, listen to this, since 2013, are being used for the first time to augment AI capabilities. There's a lot going on in that sentence. Starting off with lab-grown brain tissue models, okay, but then existing since 2013, whoa. And then now trying to work with AI, that whole sentence, it just gets wackier as the words progress into that sentence. In this new approach, these mini brains act as a middle later layer in the computing process and electrical data is imputed into the mini brain via traditional computing hardware and the brain's response is then interpreted to produce an output this method is a step towards developing biocomputers which combined biological elements with computing to create systems more powerful and energy efficient than current computers. Just wait until those little chips go into our brain. Could you imagine just having chat GBT in your brain all day, every day? Any question you have, you just close your eyes and then bam, you have the answer. School would never be safe again. Any of your work, someone could do it, maybe a little bit faster than you, which is already happening now. But this is this is wild. This is strange. And that's why we're covering it. So the research published in the journal Nature Electronics utilizes reserve computing. And here the mini brains serve as a reservoir storing and re reacting to information. So these little brains, a small sphere of brain cells, respond to electrical inputs with an algorithm learning to interpret these electrical responses. The What just came to mind here is just the thought of putting, sorry, 
putting something like this in a doll. People are already scared of dolls altogether. And then now allowing them to be able to think and talk and hang out with your kids or you if you're a kid, right? Oh my gosh. It is horror at a whole nether level. Mm. But some might fully enjoy it. It just, it just depends who you ask. It's all about that perspective as well. Tina, thank you. Thank you, Tina. Now, Tina's been so sweet to me because she sends me RV links. Like, you know what, Christina, you might like this one. And so she's she always has me in mind, always thinking about me and finding the cutest and some amazing RVs as well. But on top of that, she's an incredible moderator. And all of my moderators right here on YouTube are amazing. And you know I cannot do this show without you guys. So little shout out to every single one of you. And of course, everyone watching this live as well. Oh, someone said, SoCal Swatter says, babysitter. Think about it, okay? Have a have an adult type thing with an AI type of brain like this one, but with or you know regular biological matter. That would be a lot cheaper for a babysitter that could take really good care of you. But then we can think of that new movie. The name escapes me. Mandy, Maddie, Molly. I don't know, but that new doll movie. It's kind of like that. That's kind of what we're getting to at this point, and it's a little spooky, just a touch. Tyler, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Congrats on graduating. I'm free. Oh yeah. Big plans coming ahead. But thank you for that. Y'all are y'all are so nice. Making my heart cry. This article also goes into great more detail on this, along with the paper that was published directly to Nature Electronics. It's a fascinating one if you are into that. And as you know, if you've been following the show, honestly, for like just the last three weeks at the very least. You know how much we love talking about AI right here on this channel. But we have more. And we're speeding through this, but that's totally okay. But this one, this one has my heart 100%. Because in today's world, everyone's rushing. Rush, rush, rush. But if you're across the pond, there's always a time for a nice cup of tea. But for everyone else, we don't get that luxury. Well, this, what we're looking at right here, and I'm just so excited that I just spit all over my laptop this ain't just no regular backpack. No siree. It's a microwave backpack. So when you are rushing from point A to point B on a subway, on a train, in your car, you can always have a chance to eat something hot. Not just a granola bar. Not just some sugary cereal bar. I don't know what you eat for snacks, but whatever it is, you can have it hot in this microwave backpack. And... It's 10 out of 10, okay? Brian, thank you. Thank you so much for that. That is really nice. Thank you. So this one, it is called the Wiltex Will Cook Microwave Bag. And it appears as a chic laptop backpack. And it's crafted for a unique conductive fabric developed by Shanti Cosney Co. I said that very wrong, probably. And because this can, excuse me, whew, this little guy can heat up to 80 degrees Celsius in just five minutes, making it the world's first of its kind. So <laughs> just imagine, just for a second, just imagine the comfort of a warm meal on a chilly winter day, especially when you're on the move and without access to hot food. The Will Cook bag weighed only 160 grams plus an additional 120 grams for the rechargeable battery offers a convenient solution. Whoever wrote that is the best salesman on the planet because I would so buy that right here, right now. I want to get it right now, actually, but it's not for sale. And Jessica, thank you. Thank you. It's, it's really exciting to have graduated after like years of complaining and crying and thinking of dropping out like every single month. We finally did it and I didn't drop out. So kudos to everyone that's been through that struggle. Mm. So the bag's groundbreaking feature is a stretchable fabric, a blend of elastic electric wires and conductive fibers offering the same flexibility and lightness as a regular cloth while ensuring rapid even heating. <laughs> 
And so these, well, this was created in Japan. But what's also super cool about this is that it, it's also ideal for keeping beverages cool during the summer. It's a double whammy here. Who wouldn't want this? Ooh, Sapphire says you can recharge your phone with it i swear at this point probably I, I, it's going to be an option but let me ask you this if you were casually walking through the store would you buy one if you would hit that like button down below if you won't hit that like button down below anyway because why not right <laughs> but seriously this is a very serious question would you buy this for someone if you were their secret Santa? Or if you want, I don't know, you had like someone that's always super busy and always complaining about how busy they are. Would you get it for them? Would you get it for yourself? I need to be a salesman for this thing because I want one. So cool. But you know what? As we are heading towards the end of the year, this is when... We get those year in review kind of deals. And any website that you go on, they're going to give you a year in review. Have it be in pop culture, have it be on UFOs, have it be just the weirdest. Oh, here's more pictures, by the way, of how to cook it. But have it even be just the weirdest world records of the year. I have that for you today. And I won't be sharing actual pictures because some of them are just a little, a little grody. So instead, we'll look at just this lovely image of the Guinness World Records 2023. But let's go back to our childhood, even up to today, doesn't matter how old you are. When you go to the library, no matter what library you're in, if you attempt to look for any Guinness World Record book, it is always out of stock. You will never find it. And when I was in school, living, practically living in the library, up until I graduated high school, into college, I just, that's where I, and all the time, I would try to look for these books and they were never in stock. I had to hunt down the person that had it last because you have access to that kind of stuff. If you're really nice to the librarians, of course, and you say, hey, can you turn that bad boy in? I want to read it, especially the brand new ones when they come out right at the end of the year. Right. Oof. Getting your hand on one of those are impossible. This one's already out of stock, by the way, if you were wondering. Yeah. I tried looking for it. It's out of stock the majority of places. <laughs> the more you know. And John, thank you for that. Read the Sylvia Mind Control Method by Jose Silva. Or Silva Mind Control Method. I'll have to look into it. I don't see why not. Now I have a little bit more time on my hands. But that's going to change very quick. But I'll look into it. So let's get into some of the most strange records of the year. Number one is the most skips of a cat in a minute. And let me tell you, the video for this one is hilarious. But a Missouri tabby cat named, guess it, Kit Cat, only appropriate, trained since six months old by owner Trisha, achieving nine jump rope skips in one minute. Now you might ask yourself, how is that even possible? Well, it's the owner who has a little jump rope and the cat and the owner jump together. It's not like a cat actually holding onto the rope and then doing some skips because that would be sorcery. It wouldn't even be like a, a natural world record. That would be full blown witchcraft right there. The next one is the loudest burp by a woman called Kimberly Winter from Maryland, producing a 107 decibel burp equivalent to a full throttle motorcycle after consuming coffee and beer for breakfast. Our next one is the longest distance full body burn run without oxygen. Okay, this guy is not Usain Bolt here, but he's doing this whole 100 meter sprint without breathing. <gasps> it's unbelievable. I took track and field and I used to do the 100 meter and 200 meter sprint. Okay, back in the day when I used to have better knees than I do now because they don't run anymore. And the amount of like inhaling and exhaling you do is insane. And then after when you're done running, you are just like on the verge of tears. At least I was, because I've never really been that athletic. Well, in this case, a French firefighter by the name of Jonathan Vero, 39, ran 863 feet while blazing in that area, setting a record and also achieved the fastest 100-meter sprint in this category in just 17 seconds, 
which is impressive, especially when you're not breathing. That's also sorcery right there, okay? And Tina says, a real lady, the loudest burp. Heck yeah, why not? <laughs> this next one is the longest tongue on a living dog, and it is a nine-year-old boxer from Illinois broke the record with a 5.46 inch tongue surpassing Zoe, a Labrador German shepherd mix. The more you know, but here is a very legitimate question. Can you touch your tongue with your nose or your nose with your tongue? One, can you do it? Raise your hand, write it in the comments, hit the like button as well, because that's also a talent. Not everyone has the same size tongue. Our next one is the most spoons balanced on the body. And this one is from a man in Iran. He set a new record by balancing 88 spoons on his body and proving his previous record of 85 spoons. I don't know what's going through someone's mind to say, you know what? I'm going to break a record. I'm just going to put all these spoons on my body and, 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 and call Guinness and say, hey, guys. I want to be in your book this year. All right. Come on over. Like, what is going on? But I got to ask you back to my serious question. Oh, okay, D saying hybrids can touch their nose. I ain't no hybrid. However, I can touch my nose and my tongue at the same time. You ready? Here, I, I, will, I will show you. But I ain't no hybrid, by the way. Here it goes. All right, now, now we all know the secret talent. All right, we're not going to tell anyone, though. I'm done it on air. Getting into our next one here, and I'm just going to go back and pull up this screen here for you because I pressed too many buttons. But this next one, this one's also bizarre. Like, I don't know what goes through people's minds to say, you know what, I'm going to make it into a record. Because this next one is the most magic tricks underwater in three minutes. Like, that is just so random. So Avery Fisher, 13, performed 38 magic tricks in a minute while scuba diving in San Francisco, aiming to promote ocean conservation. Okay, there was a purpose. I dig that. But just casually thinking, I'm going to go into the water and perform some magic tricks. It's just random. But to be absolutely fair with you, I am a sucker for magic tricks. They could be so lame and dumb, but you know what? You could say, like, have that childlike wonderment and curiosity and just fascination all over again so i am all for magic unless they're pickpocketers right we don't we don't want that one this next one is most people eating a single piece of spaghetti simultaneously random so a german restaurant organized 465 couples so multiply that by two for people right and it's actually in an airport to reclaim their italian kiss record initially set in 2020 and they, they did exactly. Where are you going to find all those people? And double that, right? Like, where are you going to find all those couples to just say, hey, do you want to be in a, in, a, in a world record and eat spaghetti simultaneously? <laughs> this next one, because it's the end of the year, so we've got to cover at least 10 of these, okay? This next one is the fastest time to assemble Mr. Potato Head blindfolded. <laughs> So he assembled Mr. Potato Head toy in 12.11 seconds while being blindfolded. His name is Andre Otolf. Ortolf. Maybe that's how you say it. My last one is... Is it my last one? No, I have two more. Longest mustache on a living person is two feet and one inch. Okay? And then the fastest five meters on a scooter by a parrot. His name is Chico. And it's a cockatoo trained by Bulgarian parrot breeder. And he broke his own record by riding 16.4 feet and only 15 seconds on an Italian TV show. What is going through What's going through their minds to say, make it to a record, shall we? <laughs> It's, it's amazing. It really is. The ones that I always enjoyed seeing were those women that had like the longest fingernails ever or the ones that can just bulge out their eyeball, eyeballs, eyeballs from their skull. Those ones got me every time. 
or like the most tattooed people those i i mean i'm just like in awe by those people okay they're amazing every single one of them oh john says was it a vespa no it was just like a regular kind of toy scooter yeah you can find that picture online you can, you can find all this uh and like those images online but it, it's a cute little birdie just on a little metal scooter it's cute but not as cute as the jumping cat i will be honest they i am biased however i do love cats more than most things even though they are vicious and they will bite you and spag you and ask for food all the time and they don't love you i still love cats and i just i can't i can't undo it <laughs> out of all the articles that we covered today which one was your favorite let me know in the live chat let me know in the comments as well i do try my absolute best to read all of the comments because they're not only valuable to me but they're valuable to every other person that reads what you have to say what you think and what your opinions are my favorite aside from the microwave backpack because that's a 10 out of 10 right there i think it's it has to be the communication with whales and then the possible connection that if we're able to better understand our communication with whales, we will be able to hopefully have some kind of communication with extraterrestrials using whatever technology that they are to decipher whale talk, whale language. So I think that right there seems promising for people. So that one probably had to be like in my favorite top two. What about you? What about you? Cindy says, major cat person here. Oh, yeah. I, I can imagine being 50, living in, like, a decent place and just having at least 15 cats and then another, like, 30 cats outside to feed the neighborhood cats. Okay? That's just how I imagined my life at the age of 50. At the very least. Maybe, like, 35. Maybe even 27. Sky's the limit here. I already feed neighborhood cats as we speak. <laughs> So let me know which which article was your favorite. And thank you everyone for all the really kind congrats in the live chat. I it's it's been it's been a journey. It's been a lot of fun uh, doing this show the last few years and to finally and like okay, always complaining about graduating that I'm always too busy to do anything because I'm at school now. That's out the window. I have my diploma. I'm ready to go. RV is in the works. Everything is coming along nicely. And you will be kept up to date if and only if you are subscribed to YouTube. And if you follow me on social media, those links are in the description box below. That is the best way to, to stay up to date on all the crazy things that are happening and will continue to happen in 2024 and the updates that are going to take place right here on this channel. You have no idea how excited I am. Like my eyeballs and my smile and everything, I just cannot express it to the extreme, okay? Um, and for those that are wondering... I got a major in communication and a minor in business. So now you know. I was forced to take a minor, by the way, and it's a bachelor's degree um, in communication. They're like, you got to take a minor for, you got to have something to emphasize on. And I'm just like, I don't know, business, I guess. Turns out there's a lot of math in that. I just barely passed accounting. <laughs> so don't ask me to do that for you. Okay? Ever. But that is it for today. Follow me on Twitter at eyes underscore on the skies for all of my updates and news. Also on Instagram at strange paradigms where I share pictures and short videos. If you want to continue the conversation, bring it over to the Discord server with 2,700 other like-minded members. Share your thoughts, your insights, your experiences, and more. If you are enjoying all the content that you're seeing on this channel, consider being a Patreon supporter where all the funding goes to the channel, to Puck the Puck Wedgie, and to the RV Fund, where I'll be traveling the U.S., hitting all the UFO and paranormal hotspots, documenting it, and taking you on the journey with me. And just FYI, they do, they are up to date first before everyone else is on all the crazy things that are happening right here, right now. So consider that as well. But that is it for today. I will see you next time. Be safe and remember 
to subscribe to Cosmic Portals, where I create space ambient music. If you need help falling asleep, relaxing, or using your imagination to wander the universe, take a look at my space ambient music channel. That link is right there. It will also be in the live chat as well. And it's a great way to start the weekend on a relaxing note. And space ambient music will do exactly that for you. Okay, for real. That's it for today. I'll see you next time. Be safe. And remember, keep your eyes on the skies.